What's up campers? We're coming at you live from Savannah, Georgia. I'm your host, Chris McLean, and right over here, we've got Switchy. He's got some amazing content for you, so make sure you like, follow, and subscribe on whatever platform you're seeing this. Thank you. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another countdown. Today, I wanted to talk about antagonists and stories. Antagonists as a storytelling device are incredibly powerful. Storytelling is driven by conflict, and creating an intriguing villain is one of the finest ways to create an interesting conflict. Total Drama, I believe, is a wonderful example of this. Every season of Total Drama has one or two characters that most of the conflict is centered around. These competitors will do whatever it takes to get the prize money and end up being the biggest threats to others throughout the season. But, unfortunately, not all villains are created equal, and some of the show's antagonists do a much worse job than others. And the variety among these characters is why I wanted to talk about them today. One note I should make. In this video, I am ranking these characters only. Total Drama has more characters that are mean-spirited or downright evil, but none of them are the focal point of the season's conflict in the same way as these are. Some people might poke my picks into question, notably my omission of Scarlet, and that's okay. This label is a bit blurred and one person's definition of a season's main antagonist might differ from another's, and there's nothing wrong with that. We all have our own opinions on this, and that's what makes this interesting. So, without further ado, let's get started. There isn't much good I can really say about Sugar. Like, at all. Pakato Island suffers a lot from its painfully unlikable cast, and Sugar is a good, or bad, example of that. Her entire character shtick is being a very one-dimensional parody of Honey Boo Boo along with the Toddlers and Tiaras show in general. And the whole thing runs thin as soon as it starts. Like, I'm not trying to defend the source material, but they don't do much with the whole gimmick other than making her disgusting, obese, obnoxious, and southern. That's all you effectively get from her. There's never anything surprising or interesting about her. If she's in a scene, she's just gonna do or say something disgusting, obese, obnoxious, or southern. That's funny as a one-time South Park bit, not a main character in a 13-episode season. She barely even qualifies as a seasoned antagonist, to be honest. She certainly does check enough boxes. However, her villainous actions are just not especially interesting or entertaining enough to make her likable as an antagonist. Okay, she's gross in farts and stuff. We get it. She's kind of like Owen, but without any of his likable character traits. And at least a lot of Owen's gross out humor was funny. Now, I don't actually expect there to be a lot of controversy over my putting Sugar at such a low spot, but I do foresee some people getting unhappy with me over my low ranking for Mal. I think a good proxy for how mad someone might be with me over my pick is how much they like Mike and Zoe as characters. The more they like Mike and Zoe, the more they might advocate for Mal as an antagonist. Now, the concept for Mal is at least decent. Mike having an evil personality that has been shut away is an interesting idea, and if nothing else, Mal is very unique amongst the other antagonists of the show. But, the execution is really where it went bad. This evil alternate persona of Mike, who apparently ruled the same Juvie Duncan went to, acts out on his competitors by, uh, breaking their stuff. And looking like he listens to Black Veil Brides. It also doesn't help that in order to make him function as a villain, they had to reduce all of his competitors' IQ levels by, like, 20. It's teeth grindingly frustrating, seeing how oblivious everyone is to him when he's pretending to be Mike. The writers seem to be completely unsure whether you want to see him as a master manipulator or not, because he's apparently super strong and menacing, but also is a terrible liar who couldn't convince an actual person of anything to save his life. I have gotta say though, despite all of this, I still think the whole scene with Izzy where she is somehow able to see through Mal's facade was amazing. That is, without a doubt, my favorite moment of the whole season. <laughs> I originally considered not including Justin on this list, because he certainly is not as much of an anchor to write the season off of as some other characters, but I decided to include him regardless because he did hold the fort enough in the first half of Total Drama action until Courtney rejoined the cast. And the scene at the end of the fourth episode really seals the intention for him to be an antagonist character, at least to me, even though they didn't end up doing that much with him. And his lack of truly amazing villainous moments definitely contributes to his low placement on the list. In many ways, Justin is kind of like the reverse as Mal, in that I enjoyed seeing him, but his arc was not really that ambitious and the writers never did much to present him as a serious threat. That's not to say that he's a bad character, by the way. I think he's pretty funny in season two, 
but his role as an antagonist is generally underused. Still though, he definitely does flex his manipulative muscle a few times, and that's enough to be on the list. Revenge of the Island is very much in a middle ground position to me when it is juxtaposed with all the other Total Drama seasons. I don't really think of it as being on the same level as the first three seasons, but equating it to All-Stars and Pocketo is not giving it enough credit. And Scott has a similar predicament. I don't really feel very strongly one way or the other about him as a character antagonist. It's not like he didn't do anything, by the way. He fits very snugly in the villain role for this season with his manipulation and game throwing, but I certainly don't have many moments in my head involving him that I care much about. I never really found the farm boy or animal slapstick jokes particularly funny, though they never really got on my nerves either. I also found his whole strategy of throwing games to be kind of dumb, to be honest. Even with his pursuit of the invincibility statue, it doesn't really make that much sense to willingly sabotage oneself to such an extent, and I kind of think it was only done to give him some sort of gimmick he could have that was separate from other antagonists. Though, that's just my speculation. The Ice Dancers are honestly a pretty hard duo to judge, because when I think about how they are as characters, I think pretty positive thoughts. They're definitely funny, and their whole backstory about being failed Olympians on a quest to reclaim glory is both silly and unironically thought-provoking. But, for whatever reason, I always felt like there was something that went a little bit wrong with them. However, recently when I was re-watching The Redonkulous Race, it finally occurred to me. It's the season's wonky pacing. For the first, like, half of the season, there are almost no real interactions between teams, and because of that you never really see the Ice Dancers do much beyond trying extremely hard to get first place. They're not really being villainous, they're just being overachievers. And I think that's why there's such a dramatic shift where they start playing dirty in like, every episode. I can almost imagine the writers at Fresh TV freaking out that they haven't done much to establish the dancers as villains halfway through the season, so after that, they just completely shifted gears for the rest of the show. Still though, even with some weird pacing involving their arc, I think the two are hilarious, and seeing Jose get crazier and crazier as the season goes on is very entertaining. Now, if I was purely ranking this list on how much I individually like each character as a whole, Courtney would, without a doubt, be put at the number one spot on this list. She's easily my favorite character in the entire series and has been for like, a decade now. Though as much as I love her, I feel like there are a few characters who are better as antagonists than she was. It's pretty well understood that Courtney is a big love or hate character among fans of the show, and it's not hard to see why. She can be extremely juvenile and whiny at times, and I can see how that would irritate some people. And as a villain, she's not shown to be super crafty when it comes to interplay or politics. She contrasts with a lot of other characters here in that she doesn't spend much time manipulating the other contestants. Instead, she makes a concerted effort to manipulate Chris and the producers, and it's not even super underhanded or anything either. She just has a huge brute force method with her strategy in action, and I just love seeing it. She publicly pulls all these stunts in the faces of her adversaries, and she almost lives off of the backlash. I can get why people might not like her, especially with how callous she is to the people around her 99% of the time, but at the end of the day, I think she's just hilarious. It's not really a surprise that Alejandro is as popular of an antagonist as he is. Whether you love or hate him, you can't deny that the writers really hyped him up as a master manipulator. With his use of charm tactics, his predatory alliances, and his incredible set of skills in the competition, I think he is a good contender for the best playing contestant in the series. I think the first comparison people make when they see him originally is that he's a lot like Justin, and there's definitely a lot of similarities. Both of them have good looks that they use to manipulate the girls around them, but Alejandro uses his skills much more efficiently and for much longer. He is also a lot less vain than Justin is, and isn't as afraid of getting dirty. And because of all this, he does a much better job at being, like, threatening. Total Drama World Tour really had a knack for theatrics, with its sense of grandeur and use of music, and I think stuff like that really ups the ante of Alejandro's villainy. I mean, the World Tour finale is on a whole nother level of extremity. The imagery, the setting, it all makes Alejandro feel larger than life. And although I have my problems with the whole being submerged in lava thing, I still think it contributed to his awesome villain arc. Anyway, we all know who number one is going to be, so let's get into it. Was there really any doubt? I mean, come on. The only character who even comes close to Heather and how lovably awful she is is Alejandro, 
and we just went over him. I mean, Christ, let's be honest. The entire first season is written around her. That's not even a joke. And she's just so catty and nasty, and I don't know about you, but I just can't get enough of her. She's a total bitch, that's for sure. She's awful to pretty much every character and pulls so many stunts that I would dare to call iconic. Major shoutouts to her for reading Gwen's diary and kissing Trent to ruin his thing with Gwen. There's basically no situation in the entire show where Heather fails to make a scene more interesting. She just steals the show. Literally. Well, almost literally. She did end up getting eliminated. She also has the best downfall by far. The going bald, the loss on a technicality, it's like a symphony of unfortunate circumstances for her. And it's not too over the top, like Alejandro falling in lava or Scott being mauled nearly to death. It fits the tone of the show, which is important, at least to me. So yeah, those are my rankings for the main antagonists of Total Drama. Let me know what your favorites are in the comments below. Thanks to all my patrons for helping keep this channel alive. I'll see you guys around.